In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Hello, I'm Father Paul, and this is the good news. Christ is in our midst. The scripture reading today is taken from the Gospel, according to St. Luke, chapter 14, verses 16 to 24. Then he said to him, A certain man hath gave a great supper and invited many. He sent his servants at supper time to say to those who were invited, Come, for all things are now ready. But they were all with one accord and began to make excuses. The first said to him, I brought a piece of ground and I must go and see it. I ask you to have me excused. And another said, I have brought five yoke of oxen and I'm going to test them. I ask you to have me excused. Still another said, I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come. So this, that servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the, of the city, and bring in here the poor and the maimed and the lame and the blind. And the servant said, Master, it is done as you commanded, and still there is room. And the master said to the servant, Go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say to you that none of those men who were invited shall taste my supper. This parable, for some may be a bit confusing. What is it about? It is about God calling on what we like to call the chosen people to come to the banquet, to come to heaven, to follow Christ. They all have excuses. One person bought some land, the other some oxen had wanted to try them out. Another one got married and he couldn't come because of his wife. What do you see there? Lots of excuses for not following Christ, for not following God and his word. Excuses, excuses. How often have we made excuses? How often have we said, oh, I can't go to church today, I'm not really feeling too good. But of course, in this day and age at the moment with the virus, it's probably better for not to come. But thinking about before the virus came, we have a family commitment, we have a luncheon to go to, I need to prepare myself and prepare a meal. Excuses in not worshipping God. So what does that tell us? And then we read in this parable how then, of course, these chosen ones refuse to come, making excuses. Then the master, which actually is God, tells them to go and get those others, those down and outs, so to speak, the outcasts of society. Bring them. Some people would call them the Gentiles, not the chosen people, not the Jews. So be it. And even then, there was still room, so... 
The master told the servant to go further afield even and to bring people in, compel them to come, come in that my house may be filled. God wants heaven full of faithful people. And at the very last verse, Jesus said in this parable, For I say to you that none of those men who were invited shall taste my supper. Shall taste my supper. Will come to heaven. They were invited. They made excuses not to go. So think about it. What's your excuse for not being a Christian? For not practicing your faith? What's your excuse? We have many excuses here from these other people. What's yours? Do you have one? We must pray. Read the scriptures. Get to know God, what it's all about. I've told you that many times and I'll keep on saying it until there's no more breath left in me. You must Repent of your worldly ways. Remember, those who have been chosen, there's no excuse. God chose you for a purpose in this life. Don't make excuses not to fulfill that. The Holy Spirit is with you. He is there to help you. Make the most of it. As I have said to you, get to know God through Jesus Christ. Read the word. Pray. The Psalms are a great prayer. But if you can't even do that, Call on the Holy Spirit to help you, to help you with your prayers, your understanding of the Scriptures. Most importantly, give God the glory for all things, for all things in your life. May the blessing of Almighty God the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.